My name is Hubert Baumeister and this screencast is about showing how to define deeper correlation sets uh, using NetBeans. In our example we already have defined a process here. It's an order process which has uh, two offers two operations, the receive order and the pay. Uh, order and of course after the receive order has been done we want to pay the order so it's the same process that is going to handle this. The question is how are we going to define the process in uh, the two operations that is that the pay operation sends the message to the right process. Let's first look at the data being exchanged here. So in the receive order we have the customer here which has a name and an uh, ID together with an order which has an ID and a list of items. So it makes sense to use for the identification of the order process the customer ID here in this case one and the order ID. Customer uh, ID is a alone is not enough because the same customer could at the same time send several orders so one has to also have the order ID. The second operation, the pay operation is being uh, here the message is used for this calling the pay operation and this has, ha uh, has the customer ID and the order ID identifying the process and then additional credit card information for the payment. Now, what we want to do is we want to define a correlation set consisting of customer ID and order ID. To do this, we have to first define the properties that go into the correlation set. And that is done in the WSDL file. And in the extensible elements, we say add property and we have to add property customer ID. which is of type and now we can go to our own types, XSD types, we have defined a simple type for our IDs, customer ID type and we define the same for order ID, the name is order ID and the type is again our type we have defined ourselves simple types, order type ID. Now with that we could start to find our correlation set because we have to find our properties but what is missing is a so-called property alias which tells us where to find customer ID and order ID in the various matrices that are being exchanged. To do this we define the property alias, property alias here and we have to define for which property this alias is. Uh, let's first take customer ID and then we have to define where to find that. And that is of course one of the messages here in the WSDL file. So we go to the messages and for simplicity we ta uh, take the pay request first and we can see that the customer ID uh, is the first sub-element of pay request. And we say OK. We do the same for um, order ID. So we define here the property order ID and yes. Now we don't see the, uh, the element anymore. That is not a problem because then we can go into sources and actually copy the part that we had from our uh, customer ID and put this here into the field uh, here and say order ID and it's good to then check that uh, we created a valid XML, uh, WSDL file and that we did. So now we proceed with 
the second part. So we have now identified order ID in the pay request and custom ID in the pay request. But we still have to define this in the receive order request. Again, we add a property alias for this. We choose customer ID again. And we have our WSDL file here in the messages and now receive order request. Now we can only get so far as to the customer sub element, which remember consists out of the name and the ID. So we select this and if you now run the uh, validator for this, you will actually say see that there is a warning. Correlation property and property alias associated must point to the same type. So we are missing something and it, it's clear we're pointing to the type consisting of ID and name. So what we have to do is go to the property alias and say add query. And here we have to define the query text. In our case it's an XPath query and we say okay we want it to have the subfield ID. Again, it makes sense to have this run because now we see that this is almost correct because the element ID is qualified. It has to be prefixed with uh, a prefix, namespace prefix. So let's do this. And as one, and we see that then there is no error anymore. Now we do the same with the order ID for the request order and for some reasons I don't see this again. So I copy this alias and we say this is order ID, it, the property is order ID. And in receive order request, it's not in the part customer, but in the part order. And we have done it very similar. And it's, again, the ID. If that would be another sub-element, we would have to write something different. So we validate again, and we see zero errors. So that helped. Now, we have defined properties and property aliases. What we have to now define is correlation set. And for this we go back to the deeper process and here we see in the second top we can say add a correlation set and that's what we're doing and we're calling a payment correlation and in this payment correlation we want to have two properties there in the WSDL file just defined customer ID and order ID And now we have to somehow define the operations that need this. So this one, we could say here, this one is the one that says we need to have a correlation set. So let's go first in here. We double click on the receive and we say correlations. And then we can actually add an existing correlation set, exactly the one that we have just defined. Now we have to answer the question whether we want to initiate the set or not. Now, in this case, we don't want to initiate the set. We want to actually have already the values of customer ID and order ID fixed because we want to compare the values coming in uh, with the values coming in the message to identify the process. So here we say no. But what is missing still is that we have to define and initi initiate the correlation set. And we do this at the first receive. We double click here, we say correlations, we say add, and we want to use the same correlation set. And now we have to say yes, because from the messages being received in the receive order request, we want to take the order ID and the custom ID to, uh, as the values for the properties. Now we say accept, save, and for, uh, just for security validate the XML and our only warning is that we don't use the pay in credit card and that's correct because we 
actually don't implement the payment logic we just return true now we can then deploy the process and here we see the deployment was successful and I have already defined some Java tests and here you can see uh, I've created in the setup some data and then I'm testing one client and first I'm sending a receive order for customer one and with one order and then I assert that the result is what I expect then I provide credit card information and then I pay uh, with pro appropriate information like the ID from the customer and the ID for, for the order and I say, say that the result is okay. Now here there is a second test that tests actually that I first receive an order for customer one and then receive an order for customer two. That actually means I have two process instances running at the same time and then I'm sending the pay for customer one and of course only the first process should react on this and not the second process that we have started here and of course this one should finish the second process. Now if we run this then hopefully everything is green and we are done.